All right, here we are in section 5.6 with the answers to number 31 through 36. Now remember what our steps are here. Step number one, get it equal to zero. It's got to be equal to zero if we're going to have any chance of using that multiplication idea to equal zero, to make one of them equal zero. Second, that's when we factor it. That's important. Once we factor it, then multiplication, which is factoring, getting equal to zero, each one of them can equal zero and give us an answer. So each piece or each factor equals zero. And if we've got that, we'll get it. So let's start with number 31 right here. So uh, first step, get it equal to zero. So we got 4x squared plus 36x minus 15 with a minus 25 to get it equal to zero. That's minus 40 equals zero. Step number one, check. Now we got to factor it. Ooh, first thing we got to do with factoring is take out a greatest common factor. So here I see a four everywhere. So we're left with x squared plus 9x minus 10. Alrighty, so we took out a greatest common factor, and now we're left with x squared plus 9x minus 10. That is a trinomial. Leading coefficient is 1, so that means, oh, this is going to be a fast one. With an x there and an x there that will multiply to give us x squared. Now we've got to think what multiplies to a negative 10 and adds to a positive 9. So we can have a 1 and a 10 or a 2 and a 5. And it looks like if we have a positive 10 and a negative 1, that'll work. That's good. Okay, so let's try that. Let's write a little smaller here, and let's do a minus 1 and a plus 10. There we go. That equals 0. Now we can set each of these. That's step 2. Check. So now we can set 4 equal to 0. Well, that didn't help us. That's a silly thing to write. We can make x minus 1 equal 0 which then we add 1 and we get x equals 1. That is one of the answers. And then over here we get set this piece equal to 0. We get x equals a negative 10. So the answers then are 1 and negative 10. All right, let's try number 32. Step number 1, get it equal to 0, check. Step number 2, factor it. Now, can we pull out a greatest common factor? Remember, that's the first thing we always do with factoring. Can we pull out a greatest common factor? No. So we look and see how many terms it is. It's four terms. So we can chainsaw it right in half and look at this first half, and we get x squared can pull out of there. And we get an x plus a 3. Then on this other half, got subtract, and it looks like we can pull out a 4. Now, if we pull out a minus 4, that means x is left there, and this is a plus 3. And that's a good thing because now we have x plus 3, x plus 3. So when we pull that out, we're left with x squared minus 4. Now, can this guy go down any more? Yeah, he's got two terms. And it's a perfect square on x squared. It's a perfect square of 4. So this guy can break down. Remember how to do a difference of squares. That's an x and an x and a 2 and a 2. You've got to make sure there's a plus here and a minus there. Good. And so we just have this guy bringing straight down x plus 3. So that's all equal to 0. Good. Check. We now have it all factored. Step number 3, each factor equals 0. So let's write that down. x plus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, and x minus 2 equals 0. And look at that. We got three nice little easy problems. Subtract 3 from both sides, and we get x equals a negative 3, x equals a negative 2, and x equals, let me see, we're going to add 2 to both sides, so equals a positive 2. And there we have it. Good. Number 33. First step, get it equal to 0. Check. Excellent. Now, step number 2, factor. First possibility is pull out a greatest common factor out of here. Um, it looks like, let me see, 2 can come out of everything. Can anything bigger? Maybe a 4? Yeah, 4 can come out of everything. And you're left with 25x squared plus uh, 20x plus 4. Good, equals 0. Okay, so we pulled out a greatest common factor. Now we have three terms that are left here. 
And the leading coefficient is bigger than 1, so we could take a times c. Oh, wait, that's a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square of 5. Let's take a shot in the dark that it may be a perfect trinomial square of 5 times 5 and 2 times 2. Let's double check and make sure this works. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 2 times 2 is 4. And the middle term would be 5x times 2 is 10, plus another 5x times 2 is 10. Doubled, that's 20x. Bingo! That is our factoring. Don't forget, that's a perfect square trinomial factoring. That's pretty handy. So now we just have to make sure each factor equals 0. So let's try that. 4 equals 0. Ah, that was silly. Don't write that down. And then we have 5x plus 2 happens once equals 0. And it happens again. Each individual factor, that's really just 5x plus 2 entered twice. So we get, let me see, subtract 2 from both sides. We have 5x equals a negative 2. So x equals a negative 2 fifths. And this guy's going to give us the same thing. So we really get one answer. Now we get it twice, but we get negative 2 fifths as the answer. All right, number 34. We've got to get it equal to 0. Check. Got to factor it. Okay, let's look at it. Factoring, can we pull out a greatest common factor? No. But this is a difference of a perfect square and a perfect square. So that means we've got x and x. 4 is 2 times 2. And then to make sure that there are no middle terms, we have to have a plus and a minus. So we factored it. Excellent. Check. Now each factor equals e equal to 0. So we can take x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. It makes those two nice small problems. Subtract 2, you get x equals negative 2, and you add 2, you get x equals a positive 2. Excellent. All right, ooh, number 35. Oh, this guy we've got to work on a little bit. Step number one, get it equal to 0. We have to add 36x to both sides. So we've got to add 36x. Oops. Add 36x. And we've got to add 54. So plus 36x plus 54 equals 0. OK, so that was important. Now we have it equal to 0, so the factoring will do us any good at all. OK, let's factor. 6, 36, and 54. Is there something that goes into all of those? A 2 does. You pull out a 2, is there anything bigger? A 3, so probably a 6. Yeah, oh yeah, pull out a 6. You're left with x squared plus 6x plus 9. Good deal. And this is a trinomial leading coefficient 1. Some of you may recognize x squared and 9 as perfect squares. And if you don't, that's OK. This is a fast one, which means you have an x and an x. And we've got to find numbers that times to 9 and add to 6. And there you go. So you could have written that as x plus 3 with a little 2 there, x plus 3 squared. All right, now set each one equal to 0. 6 equals 0. Well, that doesn't give us any answer. x plus 3 equals 0, and x plus 3 equals 0. Hey, those are the same thing. So when we get x equals a negative 3, that's going to give us the exact same thing. So we just get the one answer, negative 3. All right, number 36. Number 1, step number 1, get it equal to 0. Check. Step number two, factor it. So we need to see, do we pull out any greatest common factor? Nope, there's nothing there. Uh, next step, how many terms does it have? As one, two, three terms. And then uh, leading coefficients beginning. So this is going to be a fast one. So an x there and an x there. So we've got to think what times is to negative 20 and adds to negative 1. So we have 1 and 20, 2 and 10. Uh, 3, nope, 4, and 5. Can we somehow get it to add to a negative 1? Yes. If this is a positive and this is a negative, then they times to negative 20. Add to negative 1. Those are the babies right there. Add 4 there. Subtract 5 there. And check. Factored. Now we've got to have each factor, x plus 4, equals 0, which gives us x equals a negative 4. And then x minus 5 equals 0, which gives us x equals 5. And those are two answers. Good deal.